Sometimes you have no idea how much value is locked inside a company until you break the darn thing up. Look at Hewlett Packard. Last October, the company spun off its faster growing divisions that cater to business classes, HP Enterprise, with the legacy slow growth printing and PC company renaming itself HP Inc. But often the first round of breaking up is only the beginning. I've been a fan of HP Enterprise for months, but even I didn't see their latest value creation move coming. Two weeks ago, HP reported a robust quarter, but more important, the company announced that it was spinning off its enterprise services unit and merging it with Computer Sciences Corporation in a stock-for-stock deal to create a global pure-play IT services powerhouse. We call it NUCO. HP Enterprise will own roughly half of this combined company, and the synergies could be enormous, which is why the stock has to stop rallying since the news broke. So let's speak with Meg Whitman. She's the president and CEO of Hewlett Packard Enterprise to hear more about her latest brilliant attempt to create even more value. Meg, you've done it again. You've created more value. We liked your first split. Now you've got another. But I think some of our viewers are concerned about what they're going to own if they buy a share of Hewlett Packard Enterprises today. Well, if you buy a share of Hewlett Packard Enterprise today, what you will participate in is an unlocking of value for two new companies. So the ES portion of our business, Enterprise Services, will spin merge with CSC and create a $26 billion pure play, which you as a shareholder today would own half of that company. And then, of course, you maintain your shareholdings in Hewlett Packard Enterprise, which I think has an incredible future because we're going to be able to focus on really three areas. The software-defined data center, which is growing. The edge, the campus branch and the edge where compute is moving and we have a fabulous asset in Aruba. And then, of course, our, our software portfolio. Now, uh, I think that there are many people who hear the term edge and for all they know, they're thinking of shaving cream. So we're going to solve this once and for all. <laughs> You've been using, including with my friend Tony Saganegi, who was, I'm very proud, he called out the Kramer Lightning Round. He gave you that. But he asked you directly and you gave a definition of edge that I think would not only be exciting, but rigorous when you talk about the car. So could you go through that yeah. for our viewers who will then understand immediately why this is where you want to be? Yeah, you're right. We throw around terms like campus, branch, edge. So let me tell you what we mean by the edge, and I think the industry means by the edge. A lot of um, aircraft engines, hospital beds, sensors are being built like mad. There's going to be billions of connected devices. But I think the best illustra illustration is a self-driving, autonomously driving car. And I don't know how many of your viewers have ever been in a, an, an autonomous driving car, but it's quite an experience. I mean, the good news is you're lucky if you don't get hit. But uh, that's fantastic. But think about it. It is taking in huge amount of data from all around the car, 360 degrees, because it's got to figure out, is that a stop sign or a person? Is that a car next to me or is it a tree? And because the car needs to ingest this data and then decide what to do, and it has to decide real time. And when I first took uh, a drive in, in a car like this, I was in Berlin, and I get out of the car, and the driver, because you do always have to have a driver just in case, and he said, do you want to see the data center that processes all this data? And I said, yeah, and I wasn't sure what I was going to see. And he opens up the trunk of the car, and he said, look at our baby data center because on board the car in the trunk was the data center that was processing all of this information. So it's not data in the cloud, it's not data in a data center, it is data center at the edge, in this case, the edge being the car. And that's something that Hewlett Packard Enterprises wants to dominate in the way that Hewlett Packard Enterprises used to, used to dominate the personal computer and server world, right? Yeah, I mean, this is natural power alley for us. We're expert at compute storage, networking. We're expert at doing that in a very small footprint with low um, power consumption. Because remember, if, you're if your data center's in the back of the car, you've got to be able to drive quite long distances without recharging, if you will, the, the power for that data center. So this is core technology for us. We're super excited about it. And I think it's a, a growth area for the company. Right. One of the things that we haven't been able to do is put enough perspective on what you've done to a company. You came in at a broken company that I frankly didn't like the balance sheet and was greatly concerned you have done several things. One is you've created a far more nimble, faster growing company. Two, you have enabled people to be able to participate in other ends of the business that you split off. But three, you still have amazing cash generation. 
a lot of money to be able to buy back stock, maybe niche acquisitions like Aruba, which made it so you're far more competitive in, uh, in network networking. So if you can tell us the journey that you've done and yet at the same time explain why we should pay more for your company as the market's doing since it's at its all-time high, it would put it in perspective for our viewers. Sure. Well, we started a turnaround journey four and a half years ago, and I said at the time it was going to take five years. Turnarounds of this scale and magnitude, they just do. I've done it before. It just is how long it takes. There are milestones stones along the way, but we are now rounding the bend out of that turnaround. So what did we do? We got our cost structure in line with our revenue trajectory. We reignited the innovation engine at Hewlett Packard. We brought in a new leadership team. Turnarounds are not for everybody, I will tell you. We reignited our focus on, on the customer. The core DNA of this company is around innovation and customer care and customer focus. And we repaired the balance sheet. To your point, we had about $12.5 billion of net debt on the operating company. Today, we have about $5.5 billion of net cash on Hewlett Packard Enterprise. And then, of course, we began to reshape the portfolio, separating HP Inc., the PC and, and printing business, from Hewlett Packard Enterprise, the, the data center business. We spun off 51% of our uh, business in China to H, uh, that was called H3C to Tsinghua University, which is one of the great universities in China. My conclusion was better to own 49% of something fantastic than 100% of probably nothing over time. We've made um, some portfolio, small portfolio modifications like selling Tipping Point. We bought uh, Voltage. And then, of course, the most recent announcement was separating ES from our core business. And remember, HPE without ES will be a faster growing, higher margin, better free cash flow business. So that will allow us to invest in things like the campus, the branch, I think and the edge. We should talk about yeah, again, that's giving the enterprise services business to, to new co, as we call it, with a CSC, a company they happen to yep. like very much that we've been recommending for a long time. But you, I just also want you to explain why we would pay more for a faster growing company that is spinning off a lot of cash, because I think there's a perception that you let go in enterprises something that was so exciting, enterprise uh, service, that was very exciting that we wanted a piece of, but you're still giving us a piece of it, and yet you're making it so the, yeah. the company that you're left with is faster growing. Exactly. So remember, shareholders of HPE today will own half of the new company. So they'll be able to participate in the upside led by a great management team and be able to participate in a business that ought to carry a higher multiple with much higher free cash flow. And we've been very clear that a big part of our strategy is to buy back shares. And your viewers know that when you buy back shares, it improves your EPS. If you combine that with a higher multiple, that over time can lead to higher share prices if we execute. And we've got a lot of confidence now in our ability to execute. I have to say I'm really proud of this company because we have learned how to execute. Look at the separation of HP Inc. from Hill at Packard Enterprise, the biggest company separation that's ever been done, flawless, on time, on budget, basically nine months from announced to operating as two separate companies with no disruption to customers. I mean, we have become an execution machine, and I think all of Hewlett Packard should be pretty proud of that. Uh, last question. It looks like that some of the other companies in your industry are actually still selling at a more expensive rate on the future earnings stream than you are. So there would be room even just if you look at your company and the speed of growth in the balance sheet versus others in your industry, that it would be obvious that you should be trading at a premium to those companies. Well, I think, listen, we are really doing a great job of, at beating our customers in the marketplace, which is the ultimate test. If you look at our networking business, our networking business grew 18%, Cisco's shrunk three. If you look at our storage business, our all flash storage array is growing twice the rate of the market. We're beating, we've gained share every quarter for the last two, last two years against IBM, NetApp, EMC, and our all flash business is as big as pure and probably growing a bit faster. So we are leaning in we are uh, we've gotten very competitive over the last four years and and we anticipate that that will continue we're, we're we've got the right products the sales force is fired up our partners and distributors are fired up and that's what it takes well i think you've done a phenomenal job doing this i don't think people realize how difficult it is and yet you still have a stock that i think is way too cheap i want to thank meg whitman president and ceo of yule packard enterprise for coming on the show great to see you meg great to see you thank you this one's not over, guys. She's created a lot of value. There's more value creation ahead. Stick with Hewlett Packard Enterprises. Stick with Kramer. Booyah!
Hi, Jim Cramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.